Hi there, I'm Pete Kulitsky with Audio Dynamics, and you're watching The Sound Vlog. So, says the writing on the wall. Don't worry, it comes right out with a little bit of soap and warm water. At any rate, if you're an audio enthusiast, this may well become your new favorite go-to reference video, as I explain how to count enclosure orders. What makes this one a fourth or that one an eighth? You're about to find out. So, the first thing that we want to pin down are the circumstances under which we ascend an acoustic order. And for the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on just three. Capacitive reactance, which happens when we introduce a pressure wave into a chamber. Inductive reactance, which happens as we pass a pressure wave through a vent. And of course the reactance that occurs when the front and the back pressure waves interact with each other. I realize that all this may sound a bit abstract, so let's move away from abstract and onto my whiteboard where I shall entertain you with my artistic talents. This is a speaker, and coincidentally a spitting image of this Audio Dynamics 3100 Series 12 on wheels for reasons. So let's create the most fundamental of loading arrangements by placing the speaker into a baffle that extends theoretically out into infinity in all directions. Fittingly, this is known as an infinite baffle, and as a first-order acoustic arrangement, it marks the starting point for our acoustic order hierarchy. Literally, the only thing happening here is the separation of the front wave from the back wave with no reactants on either side. So, let's introduce some by confining the back wave to a chamber. As you can see, just like with the infinite baffle, the front wave is completely isolated from the back wave. However, now the back wave is subject to capacitive reactance of the sealed chamber. And it's this reactance that raises the acoustic order to... second. <clears throat> so that's more or less how chambers factor into the grand scheme of things. Now let's look at vents. How do we stick a speaker into a vent, you ask? Very carefully. Now, some of you will recognize this as a transmission line, and just like with the sealed enclosure, the back wave is subject to reactance, except, instead of capacitive reactance, it's inductive because this is a vent, not a chamber. Does this make our transmission line another example of a second-order enclosure? Nope, we're not done yet. Notice that there is no solid boundary at the far end of this waveguide, so the back wave is free to escape and interact with the front wave. And this is the third form of reactance we talked about, which bumps the transmission line up to third order. And just as a side note, the same holds true for tapered waveguides, such as horns, except instead of an inductor, the electrical equivalent is a transformer, namely one that converts ratios of pressure and volumetric flow, but that's a topic for another day. For this next example, I'm going to redraw a sealed enclosure, which, as we've already established, is a second order enclosure. Now, what happens when we add a vent? Well, in addition to the capacitive reactance of the chamber, the back wave is now also subject to the inductive reactance of this vent, which raises the acoustic order to third, but because of the vent, the back wave is now able to escape and interact with the front wave, which raises the acoustic order again, making this a fourth order bass reflex. Now then, if you're just now joining this presentation, you might say, but Pete, my self-described expert friend from the internet tells me that there is no such thing as a fourth order enclosure unless the woofer is completely encased between two chambers. Well, this presents an opportunity for you to illuminate their understanding of acoustics by enlightening them to the fact that an acoustic order is not limited to a single loading arrangement. Nudge me back about 10 seconds if you need to hear this again, otherwise let me illustrate this by returning one last time to our second order example. Okay, now let's impose capacitive reactants over the front wave, which brings us up one order to third, followed by inductive reactants, which brings us up to fourth. No interaction between the front and the back wave, so here we remain making this a fourth order bandpass, which is just another paradigm within this acoustic order. And yay, the world makes sense. So, this next one should be easy. I'm going to Bob Ross another bass refix on the canvas. And we're gonna grab the fan brush and we're gonna put a happy little vent down here in the corner. And that'll be our secret. 
if you tell anybody. All right, so we already know that this is a fourth order base reflex. Now let's add another instance of capacitive reactance in series with event and another instance of inductive reactance in series with this second chamber. Doing so brings us up two more acoustic orders, making this a sixth order base reflex. In fact, if you're running audio dynamics in your vehicle and you're taking advantage of the acoustic engineering service, odds are good that your subs are sitting one of these types of enclosures, which are notoriously good at controlling high motor force drivers across a wide bandwidth. This one, for instance, clocks in at over 200 square newtons per watt of motor force, which is pretty menacing. Great if you're building your own MRI machine. Anyhow, sixth order base reflex. Now let's look at a couple of bandpass examples. And just to save time, let's build on what we've already covered and start with a fourth order base reflex. I'll put the vent right back here. Okay, so now let's impose capacitive reactants in series with the sum of the output and inductive reactants in series with that. Thus, we arrive at a sixth order series tuned bandpass, which is one of the popular bandpass arrangements in this particular acoustic order. Let's look at another, and again, just to save time, we'll begin with a fourth order bandpass, where the woofer sits between two chambers, one of which vents out into the open. <laughs> so, think of it as acoustic chess. How do we jump two orders in one move? Well, we vent the other chamber. So, first, this imposes inductive reactance over the back wave, and second, the back wave can now escape to interact with the front wave that's coming through the vent acoustically parallel to it. And we call this a sixth order parallel to bandpass. Counting orders is literally this simple. In fact, just as a bonus, let's quickly take this up to seventh and eighth order. There it is, eighth order parallel tuned bandpass. And just like with the lower order examples, you can series tune it, you can even cascade additional chambers and vents onto the base reflex and create as high an acoustic order as you have room for. This is just a handful of the most common examples. So, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, hope you found it useful, share it with a friend, share it with a fellow enthusiast, sticky post it on your forum. If you have any questions, I'll look for them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.